one and a half years deep into the global pandemic, a new normal has emerged. Disrupted industries have brought forth an evolution that has weeded out the old and has spawned new businesses and industries. In the midst of the struggles lies a cautious optimism that lights the fire of every entrepreneur's day-to-day -day existence. Nation rebuilding efforts have begun. The show must go on. This is the final pitch, virtual edition. In this latest season of The Final Pitch, we've gathered a formidable cast of business and industry leaders whose organizations have thrived and have seen growth despite the numerous setbacks faced during the pandemic. Introducing The Final Pitch Investor Judges. First up is Dennis Anthony Uy, the rising star in the internet service provider industry who built his brainchild Converge ICT Solutions Inc. from the ground up to become the fastest growing high-speed fixed broadband operator in the Philippines. I came into uh, Final Pitch to become an investor judge because I see so many talented young uh, entrepreneurs out there. Very great ideas and great uh, opportunity to uh, give them a uh, guidance and give them a way of how uh, they can find uh, not just only investors but encourage others, young people to come out with the uh, ideas and matching them to make them a successful entrepreneur in the future. I'm a tech guy, right? So I want to see how we can use the technology to uplift the Filipino. It's a combination of technology and talented people to uplift the lives of the people. We have so many talented but not enough ecosystem. We can come in to help them to grow and they will succeed. Before they seek funds, I advise them to make things happen first and make things believable and make things reality. You need to show that product is good and people see that and they will tell you money will come and the investor will come. Next is David Almiral Jr., a full-time technopreneur and a full-stack programmer by heart. Founder and CEO of Multisys Technologies Corporation, the country's leading software solutions company. I'm very excited to be uh, one of the investor judges here in the final pitch. I'll be discovering a lot of startups. You know. I'm very excited to, to know them, discover their bright ideas. Saka excited din ako na somehow time to give back. Time also to share you know, those experiences that we have and maybe financially and technologically we'll be able also to support also our startups. There are brilliant Filipinos out there. It's so happy lang na hindi na di discovery, no? Sad to say, startups sa Pilipinas, they're failing for one single reason. They're repeating the same mistake. I want also to tell them and disclose my failures and mistakes in the past. Not only financial, eh, ang importante dito yung guidance. Pag nasa yun ang investment, the question is, aba, may pera ka, anong gagawin mo? Paano mo palalakihin? You know, hoping that uh, maybe me or Multisys can now support startups. So it's a burden and a legacy and a privilege at the same time. Joining as the lone female investor judge for this season is Rose Ong, the Senior Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of the leading home improvement and construction supplies retailer in the Philippines, Wilcon Depot. You know, when I was offered the role as investor in the final pitch, I really got very excited. Well, I'm looking forward to hear unique business ideas and allow our entrepreneurs to present and prove that those ideas have a great chance of succeeding. I'm looking for that big why. Why are you doing this business? What is your mission? Is there a bigger purpose of why you're doing this business? I hope to see inventors that are pitching innovative and relevant ideas that can help our community and of course, even our stores. 
they will be open to looking forward to huge opportunities and exponential growth through access in our company. And I want to see someone who's really committed and passionate about, you know, doing business. Who is the person behind it? Is he really invested into the business? Every entrepreneur wants their business to succeed. So you have to be invested into it. You have to put your heart into it and make sure that it is the right one for you. Also joining the fold of investor judges is Mayor Bernard Faustino D, a world-class leader whose digital governance brought Kawayan City in Isabella to the limelight by becoming one of the smarter cities in the region. If somebody can pitch to you solutions that you can use for your city, that gave me a lot of interest because that's what I'm trying to look for, uh, sustainable solutions to really make a positive impact in our citizens, uh, not just in Kauaian, but if we can do it in Kauaian, there's no reason for other cities around the world uh, not to be able to do it. One thing that this pandemic did is to really make everybody appreciate uh, digitalization, whether it be digital economy, digital governance, or digital education. Now everybody wants to go digital. Right now is the best time, I think, to be a technopreneur because we're all locked down. We're all uh, in the confines of our homes and the creativity is really there. I think this is the best time and I'm very optimistic that we'll be hearing and a lot of pitches that uh, definitely will create a positive impact to the community and the citizens as well. What's more important is not what you will gain monetarily, but the positive impact that you will give to the community if you will be able to change lives for the better. I think that in itself is a major fulfillment that no amount of money can buy. And completing the roster is Jay Villarante, blockchain and cryptocurrency investor and chairman and founder of 8 Ventures, a tech conglomerate with a mission to grow organizations that create and use technologies to develop profitable businesses. I decided to join the final pitch because this is, I think, a good platform for us to communicate our vision. And final pitch is also a great platform for connecting startups and investors. We hope to find great Filipino ideas and also companies that can be a great fit for 8 Ventures. We're looking for fintech startups and those involved in blockchain, but we're still open to those ideas that are going to be helpful for resolving difficult social problems, especially now during a pandemic. The Philippines is one of the top crypto market. We have the best white hat hackers and we have the top talent for esports. And this is just the natural place for, for these digital industries. Where else should investors be but here in the Philippines? Up next. It is my privilege to welcome you to this season's virtual edition. Today, we will be introducing mentors to you. There are moments in your career that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense until it does. We are experiencing experiences never experienced before. So where the hell do you find talent like that? You grow it. For the final pitch virtual edition, a hybrid filming environment was created to minimize the risks of the highly contagious COVID-19 Delta variant. The final pitch HQ Dragon's Nest was thoroughly cleaned and sanitized with the help of the final pitch season six contestant, professional cleaning social enterprise, Happy Helpers. Renowned MVAC and HVAC leader FR Sevilla was also tapped for the installation of a negative pressure air conditioning system. So in Dragon's Nest, we installed negative pressure system. Negative pressure is a function of ventilation. So basically, what it does is that we extract the air inside and we replace that with fresh air. This is according to the DOLE uh, DO, which suggests about 6 to 12 ACH or air changes per hour. Hello, entrepreneurs. Hello. Welcome to the final pitch. It is my privilege to welcome you to this season's virtual edition. Today, we will be introducing mentors to you who will be helping you in the different aspects of your businesses. Our first mentor for today is an expert in people. His firm 
has been responsible for the growth of a lot of high impact and exponential startups here in the country. So entrepreneurs, please help me welcome the CEO of Icon Executive Asia, Pat Soyao. Hi, John. Hi, everyone. I'll be your mentor for today. My name is Pat Soyao. My topic for today is basically talent acquisition for startups. Talent can make or break an established organization. What more for a startup? I've worked with billionaires. I've worked with different startups. Majority of them are very, very hands-on with recruitment. And I just want to emphasize this, that recruitment is not simply an HR function. Recruitment is both sales and marketing. Sales is more tactical and marketing is more strategical. So these are the ways for you guys to recruit. The first one is basically headhunting. So the good thing with the headhunting is it's very proactive and it's very tactical because you're basically the one doing it. Next is referrals. Basically, you're asking for referrals if they know anyone. And then job advertisements. LinkedIn has a really good data analytics, big data for recruitment. And then Facebook and employer branding, it's basically the totality of your campaign. And then performance marketing. How much is your job street ad again? Double check your job street ad. Facebook is actually cheaper, in my opinion. And then there's content marketing. If you're not in the content game, then you're not in the game at all. You guys are forgetting that you're also marketing to the job market. This is my point. Startups focus too much on how their products or services change the world. Nothing wrong with that, guys. But how does the job world see you, though? Now, this is basically, from my experience, startups is equals to pay cut, risky, idealistic. When you say pay cut, for an entrepreneur, it's called hustle. And if it's for an employee, you make them take a pay cut. Hassle. For entrepreneurs, high risk, high reward. And then for employees, unstable. And then idealistic. For employees, they are realistic. They have bills to pay. So how do you get over this? I'm gonna give you the advice on how you can circumnavigate this. Understanding how to offer a salary first is very, very important. This is the formula. It's the 10, 20, 30. Let's say you got someone and you want to pirate this person. So if you offer them 10%, using 50,000 as, as an example, 50,000 to 55,000, and the average salary increase here in the Philippines last March by, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Towers Watson is 5%. So most likely this person who's good would probably get that 10% next year. Now offer this person 60,000 pesos or a 20% increase. He might think about it, he or she might think about it, now offer them 30%. 30% for me is the sweet spot. Basically, this is the time they say, all right, let's talk. And then you guys are thinking, why am I gonna pay a premium? The premium is basically for this rationale. The premium you're paying is the risk they are going to take. Startup is risky. So if they're gonna transfer from company A to company B to your company, it's a risk for them. And not just for them, for their families as well. So you have to compensate that. This is my last example for everyone. I remember one of my clients asked me, Pat, can you look for someone to head my supply chain in terms of dispatch? The average dispatch from the conglomerates, from the big companies, they dispatch at least 60 to 80 trucks per day. But my client, the highest dispatch a day in 2018 was 115,000. And in 2020, 361,000. And I remember I asked him, who's doing your fulfillment? And he told me, our fresh grad. What was my advice to him? I told him, we're not gonna find anyone who can handle that level of dispatch. There is no available talent like that in the market. So whoever is running it, give your full support and make sure to value them. And just last year, after almost two years or three years, he gave him stock options. We are experiencing experiences never experienced before. So where the hell do you find talent like that? You grow it. And that ends my talk. But wait, there's more. This next mentor is basically leading a new industry that has never experienced something like that in the Philippines. So let me introduce my wife, Yasmin Neri. Hello everyone, my name is Yasmin Neri Soyao. I'm from Shoppertainment Live. So let me share with you this talk. It's called Surviving and Thriving 
in times of adversity. So I was really part of the home shopping broadcast industry when it started here in the Philippines. Back then, what people need to do was just open their television sets, watch the program, and then they can order, call, and products will just be delivered in their doorsteps. After some time, some of them started uh, watching more through their mobile screen. And uh, during this time, I was also seeing this trend of live stream shopping. I saw these things in different places and I said, how come in the Philippines we don't have this back in 2019? With that, um, we decided to create Shoppertainment. So what happens in a Shoppertainment is basically, you know, you have your products, you have your demonstration of these products, you, and it's all real time happening on marketplaces. So there are three things that I want to share with you in terms of uh, observations and key takeaways from this story. First is observe, listen, and structure. Find the different trends. What are businesses that are somewhat alike with what you have in different countries? And find ways to structure that and adapt to the market in where you're at. Two, hire according to the company's purpose. You would need people who have those core skills. And the person's ability to learn and adapt to new things is very, very important. And third, the moment you stop learning, you will become obsolete. Find new ways on how you can amplify what you already have through technology. There are moments in your career that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense until it does. So don't wait, do more. I would also like to invite Pat back here on stage for our Q&A. Hey guys. So if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask us now. What is the best way to find your market value for a particular talent? Okay, so if you want to be competitive, the one I mentioned earlier about the 30% rule, apply the 30%. And I forgot to mention earlier, there's the concept of money trap. The money trap is basically overpaying professionals and they can't leave where everyone is susceptible to that let's say if you're earning a hundred thousand what's happening to you is that you've adjusted your life to a hundred thousand pesos so now you're trapped in that lifestyle so for you to go down in that lifestyle it's gonna be very painful for you so what's gonna happen you're not gonna leave it's a good retention tool but dangerous in the long term thank you thank you bro I have a question for Yas regarding shopper payment. How much budget would we usually have to set for this kind of online feature? First, you need to know your campaign objective. Is it more of awareness or it, is it more of conversion? And with that, we help you design a certain campaign. And then we partner with a different platform that you'd like to build. All right, thank you so much. Money spent. You can earn it back. Time spent, you can never get it back. And the time you spent right now, we can never get back. And thank you for this opportunity to discuss with you. Up next, the Managing Director of Unicorn Strategies, Dean Bernales. Always remember, image is everything. It can make or break a company. Now, our next mentor for today is an expert in public relations, specifically for startups. Entrepreneurs, please help me give a warm virtual welcome to the Managing Director of Unicorn Strategies, Dean Bernales. Thank you, John, for the warm welcome. Today, I am tasked to give a framework for thinking about getting a press coverage for your startups and a little bit of content marketing as well. As PR agency, we employ various PR strategies for our clients. But for this discussion, I want to zoom in on three basic strategies we do for Philippine startups. These are developing press announcements, founder story, and thought leadership. On press announcements, it could be a lot of things. It could be a product launch announcement, a company launch, acquisition news, or basically these are the news that you can find in the business news section of newspapers and online news sites. A lot of startups is coming to us now seeking advice on how PR can help them raise funds without a news to tell. That's where the problem comes in. Because as a PR agency, we can't make the news for you. 
we can help you identify it, yes, but there should be something going on in your company. If they don't have any news at all, the second strategy is actually developing a founder story. Founder story is the story of the origins of the brand. It tells the tale of the originator of the brand, their failures that become their engines, and his or her journey in bringing it to life. Startup founders love this strategy because it gives the audience the 360 degree view of what founders are going through. So in a nutshell, this founder story strategy humanizes your brand by creating a sense of identity, a purpose, and mission that your product alone can. Next is thought leadership, where you can express the idea that demonstrate you have expertise in a particular field, area, or topic. Most thought leaders not only have a command of their subject area, but they are also passionate about it and eager to learn and to share their knowledge with others to benefit the company or the organization or the cause. So this strategy basically turns them into an innovative expert that provokes new ways of thinking, sparks discussion, and inspires action. How you can do it as a startup founder? Well, you can give commentaries on business issues, hijack trends, contribute editorials to tier one media, or speak to events and conferences. The honest truth is that an effective PR plan today is one that works alongside with a robust marketing campaign or content marketing strategy. Public relations and content marketing work so well together because they fuel one another. Your content marketing can generate press coverage and perhaps convert your potential customer into a paying user. Your content can be your foot into the door for PR opportunities. It helps you build your brand as a leader in your space, which can help you grab the attention and interest of journalists, influencers, and other members of the press. Now, these are the things that investors in media are looking for in a startup. First is, do you have a paying customer? What is their profile? What is their buying behavior? How big is the market size for your customer? Second, why are you raising funds? For what purpose? Third is the message. Aside from talking about your profit and anything business related, they would also like to hear the social impact of your startup. Is your product or service changing the life of others? Lastly is data story. Investors want to crunch numbers, so make sure to make your research and ask yourself, is your startup part of an ongoing trend? Always remember, image is everything. It can make or break a company and could even be a deciding factor when it comes to sales. Okay, let's proceed to the Q&A. I, maybe I can start first. So you mentioned three uh, distinct ways of being able to do public relations effectively. So my question is, which among those three have you seen so far to be the most effective? Well, it's a um, case-to-case basis. In terms of social impact, thought leadership, and the founder story creates more conversation in a consumer's point of view. But for businesses, press announcements is more suitable. What are your tips in doing sustaining marketing and PR that's not very expensive because for a startup like us, doing PR is quite expensive. So what we did is we did some X deals with these uh, media outlets. I think it's best that you have to continue the relationship while you don't have a newsworthy content yet. And once you have a story to tell, it would be easier for you to actually convince them. Mm, okay. All right. So it's more of really like relationship building, no? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the insight. Right. So as part of my commitment to enrich the Philippine startup ecosystem, I will be choosing three startups from this batch to get featured in one of the top podcasts in the country. After this, my staff will contact the three startups here and yeah i'll see you there so good luck to everyone i wish you success on your final pitches and i hope to see some of you become unicorns camels and rhinos of the philippine startup community mabuhay and thank you next time on the final pitch investors if you're ready 
The final pitch begins now. We have already sent out 900,000 worth of boxes. This platform that you have is really not unique. You're raising 4 million pesos at what valuation? This is not a high value product. It's a very ambitious project, you know. So instead of you wasting time, years and years of integration, I think Multisys can be a shortcut.